So in the previous video we showed um, this small linear chain here, the small network comprising four reactions and three species. And um, I showed how you can represent the differential equations in this alternative form using this matrix form. And this form is made up of three components. Uh, it's made of this matrix of stoichiometric coefficients, a uh, vector of reaction rates, and a vector of rates of change. Now this matrix here is called the It's called the stoichiometry matrix. And is often given the uh, symbol N. So I'm using bold here to indicate that this is actually a um, matrix. Uh, similarly, V is given a symbol V, again bold. And finally, we, must, we have on the right hand side the uh, rate of change. So this is a very compact notation for representing a network. So this system here, so this, the stoichiometry matrix basically represents the network. Uh, the v, rep, v vector represents the kinetics of the individual steps. And then that represents the uh, rates of change. Now if we uh, state that M is the number of species and n is the number of reactions then the stoichiometry matrix n is an m by n matrix and the vector v is of size n now what I didn't show last time was that this notation actually works. And if you multiply this top row, for example, into the rate vector, you will actually recover the correct equation. So if we multiply um, 1 times V1 plus minus 1 times V2, and the other two entries are 0, equals DS2, DS1 sorry, by DT. So that is the correct equation for DS1 by DT. And I can assure you that the other rows uh, work as well. But it's worth going through these yourself just to convince yourself that it works. And let me show you another uh, example of a stoichiometry matrix. This time let's have a slightly different system. So I'm going to have three species again. Uh, but this time you're going to form some loops. So let's say we have something that looks like this. This could be, for example, um, double phosphorylation cycle, where A, B, and C are proteins. I'm going to set the rates to V1, V2, V3, and V4. And let's write out the uh, stoichiometry matrix. So let's write out the rows. The rows are going to be A, B, C. It's often useful to label the rows and columns um, until you're used to writing out these stoichiometry matrices without thinking because they help you orient, orientate yourself in the matrix. The column, columns will be labeled V1, V2, V3, and V4. And I'll close off the matrix here. So I'm going to also assume that all stoichiometry coefficients are 1, or unity at least. So stoichiometry coefficient here will be minus 1, and the stoichiometry coefficient here will be 1, and so on. Minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 1. So with that information, I can now fill in this uh, matrix. So for example, A is, has a stoichiometric coefficient on V1 of minus 1, so we put minus 1 there. It has a stoichiometric coefficient of plus 1 on V2, so I put a plus 1 there. A is not involved in V3 or V4 at all, so I put two zeros. And I can fill in the others in the same way. Um, B has a, f a few more. It has all th four reactions involved, and I can just write that out as follows. V1, V2, V3, and V4. And finally, C, not involved in reactions 1 and 2, but is involved in reactions 3 with a stoichiometric coefficient of 1 and minus 1 on V4. And that's the uh, matrix for uh, this system.